All right, everyone, we're back. It's been a couple days here. Uh, chaos in Minnesota right now. We've had riots. Buildings are on fire. I saw on the news a couple venues that we used to play at just going up in flames. Very depressing. Uh, they instilled a curfew uh, a couple days ago, so I had to go home early yesterday. I couldn't do this video. And then we have the corona thing still going on. So just feels like the end of the world or something. So it feels really good, though, to come back to the studio and do this video for you guys because it's kind of like therapy for me. I feel like I'm back where I belong and I'm just going to do them as long as I can, as long as I'm able to. So thanks for tuning in and being a part of it. I wanted today to give some hope to any guitar player who wants to mess with the bass a little bit, maybe add some bass lines to their demos or just to come up with some riffs on it. But maybe they're afraid like the bass is too different from the guitar so they don't wanna really mess with it. It's not always the easiest thing to find a good bass player. So for a lot of you guitar players out there, you wanna start to do some of it yourself. Even if it's just in the meantime until you find a bass player, maybe you're writing something and you wanna add some parts to it. And today I wanna to show you that you can do that if you have some skill on the guitar. You'll notice there's an asterisk though in the title and that's because I know there are going to be a lot of bass players that roll their eyes and they're going to be like, you can't just pick up the bass and play it just because you can play guitar. And there's truth to that. You know, if you play guitar and you just pick up the bass, it's not like you're suddenly going to be a really good bass player. But you're going to be able to get by enough to do what you need. And that's the whole point. When I first started, I was about 14 and my bass player came over and we jammed and he ended up leaving his bass guitar in the corner of my room when he went home because he was going to come back the next day anyway. So he just left it. And uh, without his permission... I picked it up and I started jamming on it and I ended up just playing guitar on it. So I started doing riffs like, uh, you know, I just started playing some Metallica riffs on it. I was really surprised. I'm like, okay, well, that's good news. The strings are the same at least. So we have E, A, D, and G, just an octave lower than a guitar. So that should be a huge relief for any guitar player out there to know that they're already going to be in familiar territory when it comes to the strings. And then the fret markers were the same. I was able to play uh, riffs, but I used power chords at first. So it sounded really big. It was like... Rocky like a hurricane. I was like, okay, that sounds a little too big. So I learned to slim it down to one note at a time. Like, all right, now I'm starting to sound more like a bass player. Other similarities, you know, it has the body, the neck, the bridge pickups, the volume knobs and all that. It has four huge tuning knobs, which is a little bit different. Uh, but once you get used to that, a guitar player should be able to start to make some noise on the bass and actually make it somewhat musical. Another similarity is you are able to use a pick on the bass. A lot of people, I call them uh, pick shamers. They always say a real bass player doesn't need to use a pick. But I always bring up Paul McCartney, I bring up Jason Newstead, Dave Ellis, and there's tons of bass players out there that use a pick. So don't let somebody convince you of that. It's not necessary to only play bass one way to call yourself a bass player. Keep that in mind. So at the very least, as a guitar player on a bass, you should be able to follow along to power chords. So let's say you're doing something maybe Green Day or whatever. Not what he does. He, he has a lot more complicated bass lines, but that's at least a start. G, D, E, C. Don't do them as power chords. You'll learn like I did that they're too big. So use those very sparingly. Try some classic riffs, but just one note at a time. Such a cool way to learn bass by playing riffs. Okay, so now you should have a basic handle of playing the bass with a pick, kind of like a guitar player would. What I want to do today is actually play over the top of a riff that I wrote earlier, and I added some drums, and all it needs now is a bass line. So I'm sort of pretending I'm doing my own demos and I just need to throw in some bass. So first of all, I'll show you the riff on the guitar so you can see what I have to work with. Okay, so it's just power chords mostly, but it goes like this. So if I just took those power chords and I played single note versions of it on the bass, it would sound like this. So this would be considered level one bass playing. You see? 
see how that actually works? If you listen to a lot of Megadeth bass lines, you'll see that Dave Elveson follows the riff a lot. He'll go off and do his own thing too, but for the most part, he sort of, and same with Pantera, Rex, he really fattens up the riff by following the guitar riff pretty, uh, pretty close. So that's an example of that. Now, if that's level one bass playing, uh, you could see that you could do a lot with it. Should give you a lot of hope. Now, some people would ask, well, what would a more experienced bass player do? that's different from that, well, maybe they wouldn't use a pick. You know, maybe they would, because picks sound really good with heavy music, but let's put down the pick for a second. And they might even write a different part that's not what the main guitarist is doing. And that's what a good experienced bass player will do, is they'll start to write parts that play along with a riff in a cool way to create a whole different thing. So let's just try that for fun. <laughs> See how it was a little bit different, enough to give it a brand new sort of sound, a brand new feel? I kind of like that. That's the magic of instruments working together, playing different things, but working together in the end. And that's the magic of a band, really. So hopefully I gave you some options if you're a guitar player and you just want to add some bass to your demo tracks or whatever, or if you just want to mess around a little bit on bass. You never know. Sometimes you come up with cool riffs just because it's on a different instrument. So that's another good reason to have a bass around. And I also wanted to give you a little bit of hope for uh, the future. If you really want to pursue bass, you can start to do really cool things uh, as far as writing parts and making things a little more interesting and uh, really adds another dimension to your songs, to your riffs. All right, so that should give you guys some hope that if you want to pick up the bass and just mess around, you're able to do a lot right away if you already have some prior guitar knowledge. All right, thanks again for watching. Like I said, this was a relief for me to come in and actually do a video for you guys today. So thanks again for watching and uh, everyone stay safe and strong out there and we'll see you soon. Okay, bye.